Back again on Speed Street. As we creep into late October, we got tempers flaring in NASCAR. We got tempers flaring from Tom Brady on the sideline uh, again <laughs> after my Steelers uh, made him look like a rookie and, uh, you know, about put him out of his misery. We'll maybe get into that a little bit. Of course, uh, full weekend of NASCAR, like I mentioned. Got a great guest on today's show, Christian Lungard, Smith, Steen, Vilstein, uh, who, who, who we love. Who we talk about often, who is still my personal favorite um, IndyCar call sign name that Connor came up with, Steve. Steve. Uh, <laughs> also known as uh call back to a summer show there. He joins the program. Um, very fun talking with him about a whole bunch of different stuff. So look forward to that. Um, but again, this is Speed Street. Appreciate you being here. I'm Joey Molinero, and of course, with me, my pal Connor Daly. How we doing, C D? Yeah, all good, man. Um, it's been it was an interesting weekend of of sports. Uh, there was a lot of NFL games that uh, made me question my sanity. Um, there was a NASCAR event that I also wanted to question my sanity over as why it happened. Um, obviously, the Bubba Wallace deal. It, the funniest part about the weekend, not to get into it like crazily already, but like. I was in that series the weekend before and I was like, this is wild. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's funny to have that realization that like the weekend before you might've seen a fist fight on the, on the track. Like I was going to say, but it didn't happen. Did you have that in your mind? I forgot to ask you last week. Did you have like, Hey, I'm ready to, you know, fisticuffs, man. I'm ready to go if need be. I mean, I I was fairly sure that I was not going to get fought, but like, Maybe I'm on a yellow flag lap and I'm seeing some dudes, you know, throw some elbows. Like, I don't know. I, I wanted True. to see it. Or or like, you know, you're under caution. You look up at the big screen and you see, you know, maybe some fellas are just going out there and absolutely throwing helmets at each other. I don't know. It's, it, again, huge story. It's exactly what I think IndyCar needs more of. Now, again, there's a, there's a question about do we need that? Or do we like, do we want it? Or is it like, is it really necessary? I I think that the emotion in NASCAR that the drivers express, the, the, I guess, payback for some things that they can do is a little bit better because they have the fenders. And, you know, like Joey Logano, when he fired off the fellow William Byron at, um, at Bristol to win, you know, William Byron still finished the race fine. Like, it's not like an Indy car. If you did that, it would be a catastrophic event for probably one, if not two cars. Um, but there's, you know, what is the overall takeaway, right? Because I, I think, honestly, I don't know Bubba really at all. I've only ever met him a couple times. Um, but, like, that's too much. Like, it is. I, I'm sorry. But, like, that that, that almost was, like, uh okay, this is like actually creating some sort of drama for a television show. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and and you just can't, you can't do that when lives are on the line. Like we, we obviously see how people are getting injured in NASCAR in the cup series right now. Yeah. And they're, they're hauling the mail at, at Las Vegas. It's a fast track. Um, so why? Like, like, cause, cause that happened, like what Kyle did to him again, not a great move, a L- little dirty. Hey, we we're bouncing off walls, but Both of those cars continue the race until one decides to completely eliminate two and then a third car, Christopher Bell as well. So I, I hated to see it because again, I'm happy with a little bit of rubbing. I love it. But when you actually go and completely eliminate cars from the race, it was kind of like the Noah Gregson deal at road America, you know, Noah, a friend of the show, but I hated to see that. Like you hate when that, you can't do that. And I'm glad that there was a race suspension. I honestly would like, I, there's not that many races left in the year. Suspend them for the rest of the year. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I feel like that sends a message, but at least there is a message being sent that like NASCAR's like, Hey, probably not great. Like, again, we got great coverage out of it. Right. Like it made every sports yeah. show, you know, headlines everywhere is Bubba's fighting people. I mean, what did you think of it when you saw it? I mean, what, like, I thought I just I, thought I, feel it was like NASCAR. I love people's reactions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I 
you know, I, I from, from the outsider's perspective, I'm just like, yep, sounds about right. You know, two guys get into it. They bump. One doesn't like it. One, I mean, the, on all the highlights, on everything you see, it's a promo. You see guys throwing their helmets. You see you see guys going and confronting each other. So I was like, okay, pretty on brand. Um, And then, you know, you go back and actually look at what happened, and you're like, oh, okay, probably not, definitely not necessary <laughs> there, right? Um, yeah. but that was my first instant reaction. I was just like, Oh, okay. Fighting in NASCAR between two guys who are out of the race who are, you know, going at each other. No surprise there. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a way, like, again, I think IndyCar needs 70% of that, right? Like not to where we're like intentionally wrecking people, no. but if there's a little bit of rubbing and racing, like let's see some emotion after the race. Or even if there's a, there's an, like you, you don't want to see crashes. Right. But if there is, like just someone react to where it looks like you care about what you're doing. I, I think there was way too much of an overreaction in this case, but a lot of the times these NASCAR conflict, like even Kyle Bush at the end of the race, uh, when he kind of got pushed up by Ross Chastain, I think like, you know, there's a little bit of rubbing after the checkered flag, you know, kind of cuts them off coming into pit lane. And like, again, I like that. Like just show us that you care a lot about what you do and like when i get heated after races too like what like i've definitely been heated because i'm like that guy's an idiot or like like why are we doing this you know what i mean like and and i, I just don't i don't see enough of that out of indy car drivers mm -hmm. when i know that because since i'm on the ground level of the paddock right you hear yeah. about what people talk about between each other if if some of the stuff that we talked about between each other and again, it's not terrible stuff. It's just honesty. Like if that was just said publicly, oh, I think people would love it. You know what I mean? Just because it's like, oh yeah, that guy's an idiot. And it's like, if you just said that, like in an interview, like, gosh, let's just get it out there. Because again, um, we're all still going to go racing. It's not, it's, it's just, it's something that I do like seeing because again, people care about what they're doing, but that too far. Like we, we definitely don't want, to see people intentionally wrecking anyone. Oh, no, I mean, especially not in Indy cars. <laughs> well, yeah, an Indy, that's never going to happen in Indy car, but like, yeah. it's one of those things that like NASCAR, they, they do such a good job with, I like, it's just, I, I'm, I'm so jealous of the fact that they can, I guess, do a little bit more rubbing and racing and like yeah. visually see someone like being angry with someone else. Whereas like, we can't really do that. So, right. It's something more confrontation. we're missing. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Indie, indie confrontation. Emotion. Yeah. Emotion. Confrontation. I actually had this conversation last night with, um, with Tom Blomquist who just tested for, mm -hmm. uh, for Mike Shank in the, in the 60 car down in Indy car. A uh, very great conversation with Tom. I've known Tom since I raced in Europe a long time ago. Obviously they were the, uh, the champions in the, uh, in the IMSA series, I believe um, in that Acura prototype car, which is great looking vehicle. Um, Tom tested the IndyCar and again, first impressions, he's like, holy crap, it's hard to drive. It's physically hard to drive. It's super hot in that car. How like that's crazy. And and I'm like, yeah, like I, everyone, everyone who gets in that says it. Like these cars are super hard to drive. But one thing that I thought was interesting that he said, he's like, Yeah, I think IndyCar, it seems like everyone's just kind of like a family friendly environment. And I just and I was like, Yeah. Like, I, I, I do think you're right. I think, like, a lot of cooking vibes. Lot, yeah, it's like, you know what? We're all going to go and uh, lounge by the, the public pool, not our own pool because we're not rich like NASCAR drivers. Like, you know, we're going to go to the neighborhood pool and we're going to have one of use one of those public barbecues and have a nice time with the neighbors. You know what I mean? Like, that's that seems like what it's like. Whereas, you know, in F1, because they're so powerful and they're so high level, it doesn't look like any drivers talk to each other. You know what I mean? Like we see articles about Lando Norris and Max Verstappen hanging out at 11 in Miami after the race because they're cool and rich and superstars, which is awesome. Right. But realistically, like the, the mentality at that racetrack and the way the media asks a lot of questions, I think in formula one is really cool. Cause it's like, Hey, me against everyone else. And realistically, like, I, I would love to see a bit more of that in IndyCar. I would love to see not necessarily people not liking each other. Because, again, there are more people in the F1 paddock who are friends than we probably see. Yeah. But 
and the same in the NASCAR world too. But again, we we just need a little bit more of a of an aggressive look, I would say. And hopefully, we can do that. Maybe we can do that with a TV series show. Who knows? Ah. Yeah. Well, what's the latest on that? I saw Marshall Pruitt had a report. They're finalizing, or they're coming close to. I mean, do we? Do, can you give us any insight? Do we have a, a streamer? Do we have a network? What the hell's going on? If I had insight, I would love to share it. Um, but I don't. So I, I have not heard anything. I would like to talk to uh, some folks at IndyCar about that, but I've kind of just been letting it play out. Um, and I, 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 I don't have an answer, but I, okay. I do hope I, I've heard. The only thing that I've heard is that, yes, they are progressing into something, um, which hopefully, you know, obviously we have to be patient with it because again, by getting the deal first, that means that we wouldn't have a show really until probably the end of next year. Right. So like it would be a filming through this year and then hopefully end of 2023, when our off season is on, we keep IndyCar a little hot. You know what I mean? We get people a show for the off season to keep boom, keep it in our minds. And then last episode of the show, giant flashing billboard. This is our first race. We're on NBC. We're on NBC. Like just shout it out to everyone. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, no, yeah, totally. I, I just like I would watch, you would watch, Ben would watch. My only concern with this happening is just the fact that it's kind of reactionary. Yes. You know, and it, and and it feels like whenever something is reactionary, it's never going to get the response that the first one through the brick wall was F one, right? And that concerns me a little bit. It's necessary. It's good to have. But the more I think about it, it's just like, you know, if if, if IndyCar gets a series on A and E or some shit like that, <laughs> Ion Network, yeah. Ion. I, I mean, are people really gonna fucking watch it? You know, like it, it, it'd be good. It'll be good to have, and I'll watch the hell out of it, and we'll all get together at the barbecues and watch it, and you know, BS about it, but. That's my only concern is just the reactionary of like, oh, fuck, that's working for F1. Oh, well, damn, we need to get one then. And then all of a sudden, like you said, we're on TLC. And, <laughs> you know, people are just like, is this cool? I think I'd rather just watch the F1 still. I don't know. I, it's a concern so, for me. It's a concern for me. I, yeah, for sure. So I, I think there is um, an equally shared concern throughout like our kind of, I guess, our upper echelon of folks. And I, like, let's say dream scenario, right? Like this would be the, and I had heard that the folks from Drive to Survive had actually been in touch with IndyCar about a show. Because again, let's think about this realistically. If you're driving, to the, if you're the Drive to Survive folks, right? You've got a successful show going and you were able to launch a motor racing reality television show type deal on Netflix front page. And now you're like six seasons in. Why wouldn't you be able to do that with IndyCar? You know what I mean? Like it would probably cost you a lot less to do the show, first of all, because it's all really in America. So you're not flying people internationally every weekend. And you're like, hang on, if we turn Formula One into a success, we can probably turn IndyCar into a success or at least the Indy 500, right? Do like a whole documentary series on day one of the month of May through day 31. And it's a six week show. You know what I mean? Like something like that. For sure. I think launches us into a better stratosphere. And again, if because again, they would talking. have to also yeah. they would have to promote it too, right? So again, dream scenario: you have the folks from Drive to Survive come over and be like, "We'd like to do something with you guys too," because we found success there. We think there's success a successful opportunity here. I'm sorry, but it has to be on Netflix or it has to be on HBO Max. It has to be on a, a big. Uh, a big streaming network. Yeah. I do believe it has to be streaming. I don't think it, ha I, I, I like the USA show that NASCAR does. I, I have watched a bit of that. I think it's a good show, but when I can Apple TV myself right into a show, I mean, boom, it's, 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 I love it. So that I think would be the way to do it. Cost less to do a show about us. We have a lot of great personalities that you can build. We have teams that they can uh, team, I guess, team principles that you can definitely talk to. Shoot, you could even get Zach Brown, Michael Andretti, uh, Bobby Rahal. I mean, those are all team principals. Like, talk to those guys. They got great, great ideas and great opinions about stuff. So, 
you know, it's not like we have a bunch of losers leading these teams. We got really successful people. So yeah, I, I think that would be the dream scenario. Now we're talking. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it's not like Netflix. I mean, everything on Netflix is just a different version of something that's already happened on there before. Yeah. Right. I mean, you go on there, exactly. the top 10 shows, there's three true crime ones, one mystery one, you know, two like coming up eight. I mean, it's all the same. You just put it on there. Now we're talking now that's 14 that, that shows is, about Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like that's the Avenue. You're right. Hit it, hit the nail on the head. There we go. Um, you were talking about F1 a little bit earlier. Uh, besides the show, you're going down to Coda this weekend. Yes. So um, I'll be on the simulator tomorrow. If you're listening to the show, uh, tomorrow is uh, Thursday of the, of the week. Uh, so we got some IndyCar simulator stuff to do. And then I'm flying straight to uh, Coda. Uh, James Hinchcliffe is nice enough to let me stay with him in his hotel uh, because I'm, I, you know, I'm being respectful of the finances. Um, but let me tell you, the hunt to get a, Formula One credential to get in the paddock has been the most difficult challenge potentially of my career. Um, I I have not been, I have not been to an F1 race since the uh, Netflix era. Right. So like if I went to Austin before somehow, you know, someone, whether it's, whether it was force India, who obviously I I drove a little bit for, then they're now Aston Martin or, you know, one of the drivers, like someone would be able to be like, Hey, all right. Yeah. Credential. Now, again, the Formula One paddock is a very, like, it's a very, oh, you better, you know, you better know someone or you better have who? a million. It's, uh, it's, yeah. I mean, sadly, it's, it's kind of douchey. Like, <laughs> uh, not, not like in a bad way, but like, it's just a lot of high end individuals. And uh-huh. I, not a high end individual, but am an IndyCar driver, NASCAR driver, did drive for, like, I mean, I, I, I can't, I, I always talk down about myself, but like, let's be honest. I want to get in there and talk to my friends and people that I know and that I respect in the community. So, but it was hard. I asked, uh, I I sent a text to probably 70% of the formula one grid. Um, and all of them were like, uh, no. Well, what was the percentage of response? Did we get a good return rate? So I, let's say, okay, if we're going to put percentages, (laughs) I would say only two drivers left me on red, uh, because, I didn't have their phone numbers, but we communicate via the DMs. Uh-huh. Uh, and so I got left on red twice. Um, but everyone else, like, and and to be fair, the person who was, like, really tr- trying a lot initially was Max Verstappen. And I respect that out of Max. Um, but Good for being you. a double world champion, I assume literally every single person in the world wants to come to the race to hang out with him. And, like, we're not talking, like, Johnny, who operates the grocery store that he knew when he was 12. We're talking like Martin Garrix, Tom Cruise. Like, these are the guys that want to come visit Max Verstappen because Formula One drivers are the most famous people in the world right now. So, appreciate that. But Daniel Ricardo did eventually come through for me. Friend of the show because we hung out with him in L.A. He hasn't been on the show yet. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, let's lock that down. Yeah. Let's make that happen. Appreciate the fact that uh, that that has happened, but like at one point, I was going to commit to being like someone's niece and use their past. Like it was, it was a wild situation. And worst case scenario, I was just going to hang out in Austin for the weekend and have a nice time in the city. Maybe watch some college football at the bars downtown. Maybe just hang out with Hinch at night. There's a Dead Mouse show on Saturday night, and Chris Lake, friend of the show, we're going to go see Chris Lake and uh, and Joel perform on Saturday night. So excited to see i actually can't wait for next ne- next week's show to report on the netflix era of formula one I, i'm gonna give yeah. you all the raw opinions good yeah no I, that, that sounds like a hell of a weekend regardless and i was actually over the summer somebody from coda reached out on twitter and was like hey would love to have you down for that weekend oh but i think maybe since they've since heard seen kind of my you know, uh, again, I'm not trying to say I'm anti F1. I don't want that to be the message. What I'm trying to, what I've always tried to say, be clear is, is I'm going to go to bat for IndyCar because that's my love, yes. that's my home, that's my passion, and I think that deserves the same amount of respect and attention that F1 gets. So because of that, I think some people have seen, and maybe I might have said before accidentally that I'm anti F1. So I think my invite kind of got revoked at some point. <laughs> I never heard back after I don't know July or August. Um, which is fine. You know, I got a newborn at home. I was already in Texas once this month. I can't be going back again, doing all this shit. Right. But 
We will have the, you know, inevitable boots on the ground with Connor there. And it will be great to hear back after next, after this weekend. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to get down there. Honestly, I I haven't seen a lot of these guys in years. And um, Carlos Sainz as well was nice enough to send me a, a an audio message on like, hey, I, I wish I could help out. Hope to see you down there. You know, everyone's been cool. To be fair, like I honestly thought no one would have responded to me. I even like desperately messaged Valtteri Botas, who like I don't communicate with really ever, but like OG race against guy, like yeah. And I was like, hey man. Never asked you for anything, but you wrecked me in Monza in 2011. Can you please give me a pass for this race? <laughs> Didn't say that, but, you know, I was like, I was, and I hate asking for stuff like that. I hate it, but yeah. I wouldn't be able to go if if we didn't ask. So, you know what? It is what it is. Well, you'll be there. Um, that's very exciting. Sounds like a great weekend. Um, somebody who has a lot of familiarity with uh, that world overseas in F1 and now here, Christian Lungard, uh, superstar for RL for this past year. Uh, you want to get to him? Absolutely. Yeah. Christian Lungard. Uh, I did say his name right there that time, I think. Uh, but you'll find out if I did uh, coming up right now. All right, we have a very talented uh, young guest here, a very good driver, uh, a man who wears cool hats, uh, a man who finished on the podium in his rookie year of IndyCar racing. Uh, we have that in common. Very, very excited about uh, Christian Lundergardner Smith Steenville. Uh, he has joined us. Uh, first of all, Christian, how do you actually pronounce your last name? I add a lot to it because I think it's fun to say. Yeah, I, I hear that. Um, <laughs> you, do you do you want the you want me to pronounce it in Danish or in English? All of the above. Both, yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, Lundgaard is in English, obviously. Yep. Which you apparently can't pronounce. No. Nope. And then Lungo, Lungo in Danish. Oh, all right. Yeah. Christian Lungo. So there's oh. no D at the end. Lungo. It's a silent D. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. <laughs> well, Why I'm happy to have. Why don't you tell us? Why don't you tell everybody in America to say it? Say it how it's supposed to be said. Because because um, because all all us Danes think it's quite funny that it's Lundgaard. Because uh, like the commentators in, in in every racing category I've done is always Christian Lundgaard. So we kind there of thought go. that was pretty yeah pretty hilarious yeah. I so we carried that. it on. Yeah, it's good. You know what? It works. People will now know your name because um, you are a talented person. You've been on the podium. Uh, you're driving for one of the biggest teams, I would say, in the sport because, uh, I mean, Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan, I mean, there's a lot of powerful names there. What do you think, as you've come from Europe, obviously, you know, we did a lot of the same series, but obviously very separated by many other years, many years. Yeah. <laughs> um, your indoctrination into IndyCar, your, your first year, what do you think was the the most difficult thing? And then what do you think are you uh, most proud of during the season? Um, most difficult thing for sure was how much we struggled in the beginning of the year to understand that. Um, and I think I wouldn't really say it was just tough for me. I think it was tough for the whole team in general as we were throwing a lot at it. Um, I don't. I don't think, there was one thing we didn't try other than turning the the wheels around. <laughs> Everything Changing else we the did. colors. Well, actually, exactly. you changed the colors, too. You had a bunch of different paint schemes. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, we, we tried we, we tried so much. We, we couldn't find a solution. And, and we went to Sebring, and, and we found some sort of a, a golden nugget uh, that we carried on from, from Toronto. And I would say from, from there on, so the second half of the season is already kind of my highlight of the season. Um, what I'm the most proud of because the way we turned it around and came back, um, we didn't really have performance in the beginning of the season. I would say St. Pete was sort of like average good weekend. Um, we were pretty horrible in, in Texas in, in the qualifying. We had three cars within the last four cars on the grid. Uh, that's for sure not where we want to be. Uh, but we had a very good race car. Uh, we saw Santino just jumping in for the for the race and I think he finished eighth um starting last so you know that that was a good weekend as well but i think obviously the podium's there as well um uh, i'm proud of that the first finishing legal car um so i, I oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah i can say that's that. right 
Alex yeah. was uh, illegal. He was underweight. No big deal. It, you, it, it, in any other series, yeah. you're thrown out and Christian gets the win. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. Dang. So there's some there's some raw, Rossi Lingard beef there? <laughs> not not really. Okay. Not really. I, I mean, I, I was so happy for the team that I didn't really care. I was like, okay, yeah, we finished on the podium. Let's back it up next time. And then we got to Nashville and we, we, we got to fast six and qualified third. And that was the only thing I wanted to do that weekend was just back up our podium so we didn't just show that it was a one-off event. That, oh, yeah, Indy is the only track that I'm fast at or we got a fast car. I wanted to prove that to everyone that we can do that everywhere. We just need everything to fit together. Um, the result wasn't really there in the race, but we, we were up there for sure. Yeah, did that in the second half, no doubt. I want to talk or ask you about your experience at the Indianapolis 500. Um, uh, you being the first Danish, uh, am I saying that correctly? Danish yeah. driver? Yeah, yeah first, first Danish time, driver to, yeah. to, to start the Indianapolis 500. I mean, this is a world-renowned event, historic event, and you, my man, are going down in the history books as the first one from your homeland to ever start in this race. Has that registered yet with you, or are you just pissed off about the results so you kind of forgot about it? Uh, honestly, I'm just pissed off. Because, um, <laughs> I mean, we had we, we didn't really have a car that week. Um, I think it all started on, on Fast Friday. When when we only drove like the last hour, because Connor, you remember how windy it was. It was crazy. Awful. Mm-hmm. So they were like, "Oh yeah, no no point risking the cars, etc." I went out there. I was the only car of everyone to actually do four laps on Fast yeah. Friday. I didn't. I, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> exactly. But my first three runs, I had big moments in one and two, and I'm like, I I even tried to continue for for like a lap and a half, and then I had it had a big snap again. I'm like, no guys, I'm coming in now. Um, and that kind of ruined our whole weekend because we couldn't really fix it after that. Um, and then we just went into the race with what we had, really. Yeah, it's such a that place is such a difficult animal because you make small changes because of those snaps that might have been just because of the wind. And then you get to qualifying day and you're like, well, that we didn't need to do that. And then, yeah. I mean, I've been in that situation. I'm awful at qualifying at Indy. Like, I, I'm, I'm happy to admit it. Like, clearly, I had you know, two cars in my own team that were on the front row almost. And I am in the middle of the pack two years in a row. So like, yeah. I get it, but two years in a row, I've had probably the better race car than, than my teammates. You know what I mean? So like, I I'm, I'm yeah. more focused on that, but that, that event in general, I think, did you, were you surprised at how, how that week goes of practice into qualifying and how different each day can be? And how important that practice is, because again, in no other racing series really in the world, do you get that much practice before an event, before even a qualifying session? And like, was it cool? Like, yeah, we we didn't win, but like, was it yeah. something that you look back on? You're like, that was awesome. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. My mom, I spoke to my mom yesterday uh, about it because uh, she wants to come over for the whole month of May, but but she wants to leave before the race because she doesn't think she has nerves for the race. Oh, but that, well, no, I mean, I for the race. No, I, I gotta, I gotta say, I get it from a mom's perspective. You know, it's pretty crazy from the outside. She, you know, oh, she's yeah. seen, seen everything I've driven in the past and et cetera, but that race and, and the speeds we're doing there, uh, kind of knowing, Oh yeah, that's my son driving around with 32 other drivers that Idiots. she doesn't yeah. know. Yeah. That she <laughs> yeah. doesn't know, knows what they're doing. Um, so I kind of get that, but what I what I told her is I don't really think coming for the whole month is that much worth for you because we are doing so much, and I mean for me this year I kind of just took it all in and just enjoyed it, and then suddenly the whole month was over and I'm like uh, where did that go? And then we're straight <laughs> on to Detroit. So I mean I enjoyed it, but it also happened so quick, even though that you don't really realize it. Um, but I mean, it's pretty special to drive around that place. You know, you, you kind of just want to drive every day, every day of the year, even though that we know the weather doesn't really allow that. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, looking back at your rookie campaign here, what uh, was your favorite place to get behind the wheel and and, and um, go racing? Nashville. <laughs> I, lo- I love Nashville. I'm um, glad someone likes it. Yeah, I was going to say, I <laughs> feel like you've got to be the only one. <laughs> no, but I mean... For me, Nashville was was just pure enjoyment um, because I kind of, if 
I think Connor can relate to this. Nashville is extremely bumpy. Detroit is extremely bumpy. Our car in Detroit was miserable. But that was also before we kind of sorted uh, our gold nugget out. So once we kind of got to Nashville, like the car just behaved better and it was kind of gentle and nice to drive. So that made the whole experience way better, obviously. The pace was there. But, I mean, driving over a bridge in a race car, racing, that is pretty cool, you know? I agree. It is it is a cool place. And I, I, I love the term that you're using because you're being really realistic about finding a golden nugget, right? Because that yeah. can absolutely happen. I, I, I've been in situations before where you're at a test. I've been at Sebring before and we've made a change and you're like, oh my gosh, that ignites everything the right way. And oh, yeah. Like it, it is, you'd have to be a blind man to not see how your team went from essentially like surprisingly off oh, to, yeah. okay, now everyone's like, now everyone's in the game again. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Graham's in the, I mean, Graham was always in the top 10, no matter what, all the time. Yeah. And but it pisses me off the- like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I mean, I've studied all his races. <laughs> I've watched all his onboards from 2021. And I just cannot figure out how he always goes to the front. And it pisses me off. Always. Always. It does not it (laughs) does not matter what situation he's in. He gets punted off in the beginning of the race. He comes in, he changes his nose, whatever, he's got damage. He comes out and he finishes the race fourth. And I'm like, how? It's incredible. I mean, it's one of the it's one of the wildest things in IndyCar. And like I see it all the time. I think Graham is a perfect example of that. I think uh, Scott Dixon is another perfect example of that. Again, two guys, yeah. like obviously Scott Dixon is the most successful ever, but like grand oh, yeah. race winner, multi-race winner, you know, the guy's always in the championship fight. But like the, the the when you guys did that test in Sebring and you found whatever you found, I, I would love to ask you what it was because I'm still l- looking with a hammer, a shovel, everything that we can find for that golden nugget. Um but like, but I, I feel like our group also needs something like that. Cause again, we have a couple tracks that we're really good at, but w- again, we need to be able to, like you described, extend that. Like we need to be able to go yeah. from the Indy road course to the next track and also be able to qualify in the fast six, you know, like, yeah. like we did at the GP. So d- did that just feel, did that kind of make you feel like, okay, I, I actually can, I, I, I didn't forget how to drive. But when, yeah. you, when this field is so close, because, again, we're looking for tiny things. You guys might have found something that was consistently just two tenths better, maybe three. I don't know. But tiny amounts. Did that feel good to, like, reassure you as a driver in your rookie year? Like, hey, all right, I didn't forget what I'm doing here. We're, we're locked in now. I mean, considering I, I was never really in doubt because the, the amount of stuff we threw at it in the beginning of the season – like it, it didn't matter across three cars. We could, we, yeah. we could start with a similar car and then go three different ways. And I, I'm talking, we can go a hundred pounds softer or stiffer springs on on one car. You know, not that we're talking. We can go five hundred pounds softer yeah. or stiffer, and we wouldn't see any change, like nothing. The car, you would, could, all three drivers would come in and say, "I don't feel a difference compared to the car we started with." So I'm obviously, something. For grip. Exactly. Something, something's yeah. completely off here. Um, we, we sort of found that in, in Sebring, and obviously we kind of developed and evolved it throughout the rest of the season, which is why I think we're more competitive over the, the rest uh, of the season. But how tough it was in the beginning and to find it, it's so frustrating because you're looking at every, every small little piece on the car, in the data, whatever you can find, you're trying to search for it. Um, and I mean that that Sebring test was tough because it was 112 degrees and we were just driving all day, all day. But That's you found it. your nugget. It's so exactly. Yeah. It was worth it for sure. <laughs> you had some, um, you had some pretty pointed, not pointed, but you, you had you had some quotes that that came out in a story over the summer that were kind of talking about the differences between F1, IndyCar, that kind of world overseas compared to here in america what was the response the backlash like that you got from those statements and now after that those have gone public do you still feel that way a hundred percent a hundred percent i've uh, i've got a lot of shit from from european fans <laughs> um because 
when I when I said an F1 car is the easiest car to drive, it's not a joke. It it is the easiest car because it's on rails. It's got so much downfalls that it's 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 easy to drive. But the problem, what people don't understand, is it's easy dr- easy to drive to a certain extent. You know, it it's got power steering. Physically, it's not really that tough. What's tough is your neck, your back, and the amount of focus that you need to have. So the mental game, that's what's tough. But to drive the car to a certain extent where it's still easy to drive, it it just is the easiest car. But it's so tough to extract time for because it's got so much downfalls. And it, it's basically... I mean, I've, I've, I've crashed a lot in the F1 simulator, but that's obviously because I'm driving 110% for five laps a whole day, you know, just five lap stints. So obviously you'll make mistakes uh, certain times, but on, on the track, you also know that's a factor that you can do that. And Connor, Connor can relate, you know, we're pushing to the absolute maximum limit. Um, but it, the car is just so nice to drive that it's difficult to to make mistakes unless you're trying to extract that half a second that's the the difference between the cars you see the three teams that's at, that's in the top they're they're battling within three tenths of red bull ferrari and mercedes right and then you got the midfield and it can be less than a tenth that's that's what's difficult to extract you see i mean the williams car from what i've heard in the past it's very aerodynamics sensitive so I think that's a tough car to drive just because it's so sensitive to to the arrow and and the the, the wind gusts. But the, the the cars that's I would say good uh, and in the midfield will, will be easier to drive, but also di- more difficult to extract time from. Obviously, exactly. Yeah, I, I think I I actually love when drivers that come over like you know you Grosjean anyone new that's come from Europe right. And I even talked to, I had dinner last night with Tom Blomquist who just tested the the shank car. Right. And like the first impressions of the Indy car are always just like, Holy crap, this thing's hard to drive. It's hotter than hell inside there. Yep. And like, how do you guys do it? You know what I mean? Which is like, yeah, I that that's the, like, we get it now. Like after a season, you're like, yeah, it's hard. It's hot, but like, it's really rewarding when it goes well. Like it, it's, it's something that like you feel like you've conquered uh, you've, you've won a war after the, like, at least I, I think so, because you're racing against some of the best guys, I think in the world, I think our championship is full of honestly, some of the most talented people in the world. And, and I love that we can be honest and, and be like, Hey, yeah, this is hard. We know, cause we've all kind of now driven all the cars. Like most people that have come to IndyCar from Europe, like they've either tested a Formula One car. They know what it's like a little bit. Yeah, like I tested exactly. a Formula One car a little bit. And like, I, I know, and I, now I've raced in NASCAR. So like, I kind of know the differences and, and like, and you would as well, which is, I, I just love the honesty because people appreciate honesty about that stuff. And, and, and I like that. So getting to our competition and our great drivers that we're racing against, who did you find the least fun to race against? And who did you find to be uh, a respectful, okay to race against person? <laughs> um, so. Uh, let me think. You were really fast in Texas, by the way, too. You guys had a great race car. I was blown away. I didn't have yeah. a pit speed limiter that was working. So I did about 48 pit stops. But every time I came out of the pits, I felt like you passed me. So that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we we had pace at Texas, which was kind of fun to think about because it was my first ever oval. Yeah. Oval race. So, you know, I, I just went in there. Oh, like, let me survive. You know, let, let me get home tonight. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, that, that race was pretty cool. But um, I'm, I'm just thinking. Um, I'm not sure I should say who I didn't enjoy the, the most <laughs> racing with. We need um, honesty, man. That's what that's what we need right now. We I, got people fighting. I, I think, I'll fight him. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think many will agree. Um, but he's also a good racer because he throws everything at it. He, you know, he races with his heart, which is Takuma Sato. Oh, yeah, I, I did know, not he, expect you to say that. No, but you you see what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. I, no, I, he, I don't he, like he will fight you, Takuma. Yeah, no, I, I don't he, like. He will fight you for seventeenth. Yeah, like, like it's the last lap of the race for the lead. Yes, and I mean that—that's appreciated because that's racing. You know, you, you yeah. also you want to you want to beat whoever is on the track. You want to beat everyone, so it doesn't really matter where you are. 
Um, we had that at like mid Ohio this year for like 13th or something. And I was like, goodness gracious. I thought I was going to get used like a break and turn the house defending for my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like racing teammates just because there is this sort of respect. Yeah. Graham's um, a good racer too. I, I do is, like racing with Graham. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Jack, to me, I mean, Jack only hit me once this year, but it was all because we all backed up in Nashville and everyone hit everyone. <laughs> yeah. I was actually very lucky there because I was in the middle of everything because Graham yeah. was the one who started it, who hit yeah. Pado, and I was right behind Graham. So how I didn't end up in it, I don't know, but I didn't. So it, which was great because, you know, I came out basically second after that. So yeah, can't really, can't really complain. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Graham, Graham, Graham is a very good racer. Um, I haven't had any particularly bad experience with passion but i've i've raced him quite hard and there's been some wheel banging but i don't like racing against simon that's public (laughs) for me i don't like it ever Uh, um i mean he has come out ahead every time oh wait you guys in front of me at mid ohio had a bit of a a bit of a schmozzle yeah yeah twice uh we had some good racing in toronto as well yeah see i didn't i wasn't i wasn't in the race in toronto so i I was just driving around at the back (laughs) <laughs> I've had good I've had good experiences with Pato, but we haven't been on the same lap, so it's kinda <laughs> unfair, you know. Yeah, that's that's all right. <laughs> yeah. But that's I great. mean over over short over racing is awesome. Yeah. Agreed. It's so cool. It's so cool. Has Graham Did you like St. Um, Louis? Oh god. No. Right. No. No, no St. Louis. <laughs> See, I love St. Louis. <laughs> that's funny. Go ahead, Joey. Has uh What's that relationship with Graham been like for you? He's he's the elder statesman, you know. He's the old guy in his own team, one of the older guys in the series. Has he been kind of like a bigger brother to you? Has he hazed you a little bit? What's that been like? And has he sold uh, you a car yet? No, he hasn't. <laughs> he has not. Um, I think it's been very much up and down. Um, you know, it all started out as a very uh, kind of the, the sort of like father mentality. He wanted to teach me how like kind of just give me good advice but obviously i i knew what he was kind of leaving leaving out for for himself um but he also knows that none of us are stupid i know how to to drive a car um and etc but i mean for the ovals he's been a big help uh i wouldn't really say i would have needed that much help for for road courses or or street circuits because i've i've done that in the past uh but just ovals in general it's it's been pretty crazy to just been thrown into um, and I, I, every time, uh, some of my European friends from, from racing ask me, Oh, how is it on the ovals? And I'm like, okay, F2 at Monza, DRS open. It's 320 kilometers an hour at, at the end of the, the straight. Just turn hard left. There you go. Yeah. You know, but you're even driving what 40, 40, 50 kilometers faster at, at Indy. So, I mean, for them, it's pretty, pretty crazy to, to kind of put it into perspective like that but it's kind of the reality is you're at the end of monza and you just turn hard left keep your foot flat uh which, which is kind of tough but understanding that from graham and all these small different things that he's taught me throughout the season um how to race cars how to understand when to to back out and and all these kind of things has been a huge help um but he's also been pissed sometimes when when i have been faster which i kind of get i mean I'm pissed when he's faster. That makes sense. I hate when For he drivers, keeps beating yeah. me in the races. You know, he always ends out on top, and it, it pisses me off. <laughs> it's whatever fair. he what yeah whatever he does in the races, I want to do. I don't care. Teach me. Yeah, because we it's funny. Like we often sometimes if the races go green for a long time, right? You end up doing your own strategy. You're on your own program. And you think, well, I haven't been passed by anybody, and maybe you've passed a couple people, and you get to the end of the race, and you're like, what? Like how? I never saw that guy once, and he finished fourth. You know, like what? Like what happened? Yeah. There's so many moments like that in IndyCar because of the strategy, because of how the Which yellows is cool. play out. Yeah. But but that's cool. I mean, I I love that we can't pit on the safety car. Yes. Yeah. I love it because F1 has become so boring. Because it doesn't change the result. It doesn't change anything. And I mean, they want to to increase the amount of racing and close racing and overtaking. But I mean, 
the guys that are leading the race don't have to overtake anyone if they just pit under a virtual safety car or a safety car because they will come out in the exact same position. Yeah. And that's why I love IndyCar. You, I mean, you can be on the on the good side of it or the bad side of it. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's how, that, that's how racing is. I mean, I was even, uh, Colton, uh, Rossi, and I were very, very lucky in uh, in Indy for the, for the GP where we finished on the podium because the yellow came out when we already passed the, the start-finish line. And everyone else pit it, and we we're like, "Oh, don't close the pit because we are, we will be screwed." Yeah. Um, we know that we 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 gained some luck that day for sure. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> What's the? Um, um, yeah. What happened to you? I'm I'm curious. I I mean I know, but what happened Eddie, to you? Oh, I I stalled in the second yeah, MDGP you, or the first one. Uh, second one. Did you run yeah, out of this, talent? Like no, me? no the. Well, we don't have enough horsepower in our cars uh, in any uh, car to spin the wheels coming out of the pits. So I'm pitting right behind Joseph, and I start to leave and stall. So driver error. It is driver error, I think. I, but, yeah, uh, I did the same thing. I never so lifted worried. off the throttle. So, like, usually if you have your foot down and you're building the boost, you should spin the rear tires. <laughs> yeah, I, anyway, did, I did the same in Portland. Problem. I did it in Portland. Oh, yeah, you get it. <laughs> yeah and then i ended I, up hitting a sign afterwards yeah i was just on fire in portland so we yeah. both had a bit of a chaotic day <laughs> yeah what about what about that tv screen oh yeah also one of the funniest moments of the weekend joey you remember seeing that we had the the tv screen that was falling over and leaking fluids i don't refresh my memory i don't I it was in that. practice we had practices delayed oh, like an hour. Oh, the giant yeah. one. Not yeah. the TV screen, the, the, the giant fucking one. fucking Jumbotron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <wow. laughs> yeah, I remember. Hey, Whoops. so to to get into some uh, living in America questions. Yeah. What fast food restaurant has been your favorite? And are you impressed with the amount of fast food restaurants that we have at every exit on the highway? And are you happy about that? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but I, I do eat a lot of Chipotle. Oh, all right. Chipotle. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is another one, uh, sort of like Asian. What is it called? Panda Express. Panda Express. No. P.F. Chang's. No. Is it BB Bop? Is that what it's called? <laughs> <What? laughs> BB Bop. Yeah. Wow. What is that? That's a deep cut there, brother. No, wow. no, there, there, no, no, there, there, there's one called something like that, which is like, it's the same as Chipotle just for like Asian food, you know, like noodles and stuff. Really? Yeah. This sounds one great. Very, I don't, I don't yeah. know about this place. No, there's one up in Carmel. Uh, well, I don't, I don't live on the nice side of town. I live downtown, so I, I don't, I don't get up there very often. <laughs> well, now you got a reason yeah. to. Have you been to In-N-Out Burger yet? Uh, I have. I, I was there in November 2021 when I got announced as an IndyCar driver. There you go. I actually think it was the same day. Love that. Yeah, it was pretty celebratory pretty cool. in and out. What What but, are your yeah, thoughts? Not... Do you guys celebrate Halloween like we do over there? Um. So I Probably don't think and I don't think any country really <laughs> celebrates as much as the states. <laughs> That's fair. Quite, quite, quite honestly, but I, I mean, I'll, I'll be back for Halloween, so I'm, uh, I'm excited to experience it. What are you going as? Um, yeah, what, yeah, what's no. costume? Costume number one. Um, I don't know. Because I don't know either. I'm having a, a tough mask. time. I, uh, yeah, let's paint Why your not? face. Or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that kind of ruins the, the whole, the whole mask, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it does. You got to paint. You got to paint a mask. So you said you had a question for me before we started recording. Uh, I would like to entertain that question if you remember what that is. Yeah, I do. How was? Let's hear it. How, how was it driving a NASCAR car? <laughs> well, it was something. I, I we we talked about it a little bit on our on our show last week for our listeners, but I feel I, I feel like I listened to it and I was like, man, I think I forgot a lot of stuff. But it it was it was fun. It was. It's a really cool series. Um, the car is wide. It's big and wide. Like it feels. Yeah, you, you, yeah. I remember huge. that clip where you hit the wall. Yeah. 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 I did, did hit the actually, wall. Yeah. Did, did you actually just run wide because you thought 
no space. Or did you? No, I'm... the steering broke, Christian. Really? <laughs> like, I didn't have any steering. Yeah. I didn't just drive straight in the freaking wall. <laughs> what do you think? I'm an idiot? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You're the first person who I've actually talked to who's like, oh, did you actually, was, did you make a mistake? No, no. no I, 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 I've only <laughs> seen the video, but I haven't seen it with volume. So I've, I've heard no commentary of it or uh, anything. I've just seen a video where you drive straight into the wall. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and now, I, and, now, I just, no, and now and now you say the car is wide, so I'm like, oh, did you just under, underestimate how wide it was, or? Yeah, just wanted to give it a slap when I had no steering wheel. That was essentially yeah. you could have spun it around like a top. But other than that, it was fun. Like again, a sequential gearbox. I don't know if you ever raced anything with yeah. with a sequential gearbox. Great time. Like I, I enjoyed that part of it. Um, the fact that you can do a little rubbing, good. Uh, tires, not as great. I think, I think they're very, um, potentially they're affected by a lot and they could explode easily. Um, so that's, I, I would like to thank Firestone for not exploding easily. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the impression that I had and, and that we and IndyCar have a lot of work to do to make sure that our events are as big as their events. Exactly. That's, that's, um, no, honestly, I did a, I did an interview not long ago, a couple of weeks ago where I said the exact same thing. I mean, for me, I think IndyCar is so much bigger than it looks to be. Cause I mean like yes. the new facility, the new facility we are making, uh, building at RLL, which is pretty much done now, uh, which should have been done in May. That's another story. Big. It's it's huge. And I've been at the Alpine factory so much because I lived in the UK before. Um and and I mean we're we're talking F one factory level. And that just proves how big IndyCar really is. And they aren't known for that. And I think that's so wrong because I came over here and I kind of don't really want to leave because I enjoy the racing so much because that's what I grew up believing in the way we race in IndyCar is what I believed in growing up. So why isn't this bigger than it is? So I, I, I mean, I completely agree with you. It needs to, to be promoted way, way better than it is to become what it needs to be and deserves to be. The age old question. We've been trying to figure that out since we started opening up mics here at speed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's been a tough one. That's for sure. Are you excited for the video game? Are you gonna? What do you? What kind of console you got? PS Five. Uh, I got a PS Four, which my laptop is actually standing on right now. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Also serves as a uh, yeah a tray. That's good. Yeah, you because know, I'm at a friend's house and we we got gaming night coming up. So. Uh... I love that. Nice. Hey, we yeah. appreciate Christian doing this live from over the seas because he is not in America right now. So big time it's difference. A- yeah. It's we only appreciate that. Yeah, it's all right. You know, we're just coming up on lunchtime. Um, Christian, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for doing this. It was a last minute request uh, because Kyle great. Kirkwood also, Kyle Kirkwood bailed on us because it's his it birthday great. today. And oh. he said he is going to be in no shape to do a podcast, which I respect because it's his birthday. Yeah. Go on Twitter. There is a picture that someone. Yeah, have yes. you seen it? Yeah, it, dude, it's a uh, Music City GP, your favorite track. Uh, they love you so much <laughs> that they put your yeah. face on Kyle Kirkwood's birthday post. <laughs> yeah, I, I got, I got, I got to send it to him and say happy birthday, buddy. But isn't that funny? You look, like, look kind of like me. <laughs> one thing, it's like, it's it's simple. Like, just someone yeah. go, don't don't tweet out the wrong driver for their birthday. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just, ah, it makes me makes my blood boil. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it, 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 it even had his name, but my I picture know. is yeah. weird. <laughs> I mean, hey, two great, young, talented drivers. We'll just go with that. And, and yeah, I don't 100%, know. Yeah. Exactly. They, they mixed them. Yeah. Exactly. Man, what, a, what a driver that would be. Oh, <laughs> man. What a mixture of two elite talents, elite athletes, oh, yeah. just complete wild. How do you think Christian's or, – <laughs> how do you think Kyle's going to do next year? Um, Andretti. What's your I prediction for Kyle I, moving up to the big leagues? I think it, it very much depends on how the team's doing because I think yes. this year they 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 kind of dropped off a bit, um, which I was surprised about. Uh, I mean, they I think they had one or two cars that were sort of there some events, but otherwise they weren't really that competitive. Uh, I mean, compared to what I I expected them to be. Yeah. Um, but I think that's also a big motivation boost for them, you know, to to dig dig deeper. 
So I think they'll be competitive. Um, but it, I mean, it's so hard to predict because I think everyone is it, predicting everyone to be better next year, and then it's 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 gonna turn out the same, isn't it? You know. Uh, I hope not. I hope we're better. Goodness yeah, gracious. no. I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, but I know what, what you I, mean. Yeah, what I always find is that everyone, just everyone becomes better and we, we kind of, we just stationary, you know. We, we, we're yeah. better, but everyone else is better too. So it's it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the standards get reset every year. So it's it's part of the reason why we love IndyCar racing. And um, for all those folks at home who listen to this, who love IndyCar racing or who might be new to IndyCar racing, uh, we ha- now have a new friend of the show, Christian. I appreciate your time. Uh, appreciate the fact that uh, you like IndyCar racing and that uh, you are now a 21-year-old human being. So uh, first cocktail of choice when you were 21, did you go beer or cocktails? What did we do? I can't actually remember. All right. Well, that means you did it right. So, <laughs> Christian, thank you so much. Thank, thank you for being on our show. <laughs> Love that guy. Uh, I think he's great for the series, not only on the track, but I think he's a really fun, engaging young personality and can't wait to see more and more from him in the future. I love how much he enjoys America and he enjoys the racing in IndyCar. And I think that's really important. Great combo. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great guy. Um, and, you know, came from the European feeder series, sort of like I did. Um, but, you know, I, I did Indy Lights a little bit as well. Uh, and then there was, I, 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 we'd like to pay some, you know, pay some attention to Indy lights now because we're an Indy car. Yeah, yeah, what's the, the word show. there? Um, and in Indy lights, I find it really fascinating right now because it's, it, it has struggled to get the car count over the years, right? Like when I did Indy lights back in 2011, I did one race in like 2013 too, but 2011, it was Joseph Newgarden and I, Esteban Guerrero. Uh, you know, a couple other really good guys. You know, there was probably, I would say, 20 cars, maybe like 18 or 17 at some places. So maybe not, you know, I remember in the in the in the late two thousand like 2007, eight, there's you know, 30 Indy Lights cars when they showed up to St. Pete. Um, but you know, times change. And I would say this next year, like this year, there was probably 12 guys, 13 guys that yep. you'd see, maybe 14, which is great. Um, but again, the deeper the field, the more respect the championship gets. And it does deserve respect because there's a lot of great drivers that come out of there. Um, obviously Kyle Kirkwood, you know, very, very talented driver. Malukas. Um, you know, almost a Malukas. Uh, yeah, exactly. David Malukas, incredibly talented driver. Um, but yeah, right now you have, we've had a team come in HMD, HMD motorsports who I know the, uh, some of the folks over there, a lot of that was connected to David Malukas, uh, and, and his family and, uh, and Benjamin Peterson's family as well, who's now an IndyCar driver also. Um, but I think they're there. They have announced that they're running eight drivers o- under their team. And they've announced today that, um, that there's a ninth driver in partnership with them, which is uh, the force Indy team, um, which is Ernie Francis. Ernie Jr., Francis of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's, I, I find that wild because there was a small era like that where Sam Schmidt Motorsports back when we were in Indy Lights were kind of running like five cars and they were like, oh, that's a lot. Yeah. But eight or nine cars out of one team, it's almost like, I mean, point. is it, 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 it's wild to think about. And, and, and you still have a team like Andretti, but it becomes harder for other small teams to compete against that. Because when you have eight cars, you have so much data, you have so much money coming into the team, you have so uh-huh. much this, that, and whatever. Um, I do hope that there's either a uh, either it gets split up or not necessarily split up because you want to see more cars. Like if there's if there's eight HMD cars slash nine and there's, you know, four Andretti cars, three other cars and you get to like 16, 17 cars. That's great. But the other teams who run like two cars or one car, why would they even compete if they're going up against an eight car giant? So, again. Love the fact that Indy Lights, what they're doing, the fact that they can get that many cars is fantastic. I think we need 20 to 25 cars on the Indy Lights grid every weekend because, again, it strengthens our show. It's like it's a, it's it's an Xfinity race. We want it to be as big as an Xfinity race would be. We want it to get the respect. We want drivers to get paid in Indy Lights before they get to IndyCar to make money at the at the top level. Um, but I just th- I thought that was interesting and worth talking about eight 
nine cars in one team is something that I've never seen before. It's, it's wild. It's wild. It's like Bama loading up on five-star recruits, you know? It's like, hey, yeah. how, how's Kentucky and Arkansas supposed to compete in the SEC when you got – three five stars sitting on the bench man you know let's 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 spread the wealth around here a little bit but you know when you have the resources when you have the ability to do so you're gonna exactly do it, which is the name of the that's game. how it works you know now joey it works yeah you have a new show as well that i would like to uh let the people know about because i think that's a very good show i've seen a lot of tiktok clips um that i find very funny Thanks, and man. so i i i have enjoyed seeing all the clips um, yeah. and I want I want to let you tell the people that you know what we have to well, another another thing to listen to. Yeah, dude, thanks. Uh, so me and Ben Polizzi, comedian, very famous now after being on uh, HBO's F Boy Island, uh, being a star on there. He's been probably my best friend for a very long time. Grew up together, and, and we've been doing. You know, you see us do the Johnson and Schmitty videos together, a lot of content together and everything. And so uh, we started doing a podcast for two years, like five or six years ago. And then, you know, a whole bunch of shit happened in the world and with our careers. And then now we've gotten to the point where we're like, hey, let's start something up again. So we did. Uh, we call it These Guys uh, with Ben Benedict Polizzi and Joey Molinero. And it's just us getting together um, two comedians getting together for, you know, an hour conversation every week to really just make fun of as much stuff as we can and have a great time. So uh, Apple podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, if you just look up these guys uh, with our names, we'll be there. Would love to have you for, for a little bit of a laugh and, uh, and some enjoyment each and every week. So I appreciate that, Connor. Yeah. We're uh, again, we're, we're, you know, spreading the wealth here for, for myself, you know, kind of trying to touch on all bases, do all of that and uh, diversify the portfolio. A lot of business phrases coming out of me right now. Don't, don't, don't know where that's coming from. Cause I haven't been in a regular workplace for like four years now, but anyways, these guys, uh, me and Ben Polizzi, uh, just launched. We're like five episodes in, but uh, hope to see you there. We record on two. Yeah. We record on Monday or Tuesdays. A new show comes out every Tuesday. And uh, really trying to build up that YouTube channel, you know, getting those views on YouTube. We're just kicking it in a studio, having fun. And, um, yeah, it's a blast. So appreciate the shout out there, man. Yeah, absolutely. I like that studio that you guys use. We, I've been there before, recorded stuff there before. Yeah, um, It's great. So, I, again, yeah, we're, we're out here trying to make sure that everyone's program gets stronger. And uh, a strong program that we like to uh, continue to build is the random Indy 500 driver of the week, the Ricky Treadway random Indy Look 500 driver of the segues. week. Look at you with the segues. Damn. Great segue. Show host, dude. Ah. We are fully ready for the random Indy 500 driver of the week this week. Lay it on. Um, we have got the 1952. We went old. 1952 Indy 500. Uh, a little post-war vibes. Um, Troy Rutman won this race. Mm -hmm. Uh and I went to a man who finished 32nd. He had a, he had a gearbox failure. Tough day in the 1952 Indy 500. Uh, Bobby Ball. Bobby Ball finished uh, 32nd. Bobby Ball uh, was uh, an American race car driver. His, his Wikipedia page is quite small. So <laughs> it's tough to find out a lot of stuff. Well, really passed but, away. He passed away two years after this. Yep. Crazy. Um, Ball began racing with the Arizona Roadster Association, uh, subsequently switching from Roadsters to Midgets. He won the Arizona State Midget Association Championship. All right. Uh, finished fifth in the 1951 Indy 500. All there right. So top five finish. There you go. Um, so respect that out of Bobby Ball. Uh, and yeah, just we're learning new things. Learning new things about Bobby Ball here. Two Indy 500s under his belt. Uh, or three, yeah, two, no, two, 1951 and 1952. Yeah, he, dang, so he passed away after an incident on January 4th, 1953, an accident at Carroll Speedway in Los Angeles. He had terrible head injuries that put him in a coma, and then 14 months later, he died of an infection. Man, rest in peace, there you Bobby. Go. But the 1952, 1952 uh, Indy 500 grid, it's all Americans besides one driver. There's a Paisano, Alberto Escardi. Uh, he finished 31st, but 
He had all American field besides one Italiano. Got to give a shout out to that guy too. Very famous driver as well, Alberto Ascari. Like I, I, you might know that name, but you might not know it. But I, I definitely know Alberto Ascari. Very famous and a legendary um, auto racer for sure. So we're learning a lot in this segment. Love it. Awesome. Big weekend for Connor heading down to Coda. Um, I will be here. I'm going to <laughs> you'll get a kick out of this. I'm full on dad grown adult. I am going to a uh, one year old's birthday party on Saturday. Uh, so nice. it's, it's Frank's Frank's first first birthday party. He's he's going to be attending. We're all very very excited about it in the Molinero house. Um, so got that on Saturday. Connor will be living the high life, enjoying himself down in Austin, Texas, and I'll be watching one year olds, um, you know, shit themselves. So it'll be a great time. Um, anyways, so this is Speed Street. Be sure to follow us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We're out on YouTube as well on uh, Dale Jr. Download, uh, Dirty Mo Media, excuse me, Dirty Mo Media page. Um, let's see here. Did I, did I miss something? Uh, sorry, getting a text from Connor saying it's all choppy. Don't know if it is, but again, follow us. At Speed Street Pod, Instagram, Twitter, follow us for the show. Every week we're here, releasing on Wednesdays. Appreciate you. And until next time, we'll talk to you on Speed Street.